the commonly held belief is that happiness lies in the future when i achieve this or that then i will be happy more often than not this causes frustration and despair for the sake of reaching the finish line people do whatever it takes even at the expense of burnout and other collateral damage fortunately there is a better way of working blissfully In our ongoing discussion on happiness today we shall learn the secret of finding more joy at the workplace The International Gallup organization did a worldwide survey and discovered that only 13% of people worldwide are positively engaged What does that mean They like their work they are eager to contribute and are invested in the success of their company 63% of employees worldwide just go through the motions they do what is required they drag their feet through the job but they really don't care whether the company succeeds or fails If the rival company offers them a 25% higher salary they won't mind dumping their present job and switching but the worst is that 24% of employees worldwide are actively negatively engaged which means they say things that hurt the morale of the organization they do things that undermine the organization's profit customer clientele base etc and the consequence is that the world is losing trillions of dollars because of dissatisfied employees realizing this Many multinational organizations have created a new post just as they have COO chief operations officer CMO CFO CEO they now have another C suite job called CHO chief happiness officer McDonald's has got it Google has got it Now their job is to make employees in the organization happier. But we are here today to discuss how can we find more joy while working. The first tip I'd like to share with you is to be process oriented less than goal oriented. Naturally you need to set goals and targets to accomplish but if you are only working for the goal it is in the future and you have tied up your happiness to a future accomplishment the journey out there then involves drab and dreary work instead if you start enjoying the process the whole perspective changes Let's take a look at what happened to Samuel Pierpont Langley. He was commissioned by the US government at the turn of the 20th century to lead the military endeavor in exploring this concept of a flying machine. He had access to the biggest brains in the nation. 50 million dollar fund was created from him in those days and he was given a seat at the Harvard University the New York Times would follow his every move and yet 
No one today has heard of Samuel Pierpont Langley. What is the reason? He was goal-oriented. For him, it was all about the glory, the fame, the money that would come out of inventing this aeroplane. But he was outdone by two brothers in North Carolina who did not even have college degrees. And they were the owners of a bicycle shop, but they were in love with the process. Along with their friends, they'd go to what they had created as an airstrip with five sets of spare parts. Because that was the number of times their experimental machine would crash. And finally, in the year 1903, on 17th of December, when they took first flight, nobody came to know of it. It was only a few days later that the New York Times was made aware for Wilbur and Orville Wright. It was love of the process. And the proof that Langley's attitude was different was that the moment he came to know the aeroplane had been invented, he closed his shop and left. Had he also loved the process, he would have made himself available. Wow, you did it? Let me see how I can help you to do it better. So Sri Krishna has said in the Bhagavad Gita, Karmanne vadhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana Arjun, do your duty, but don't be attached to results. Let's see what the art and science of happiness has to say on this topic. Every job comes with objectives and targets. Outcomes are what ultimately count for most organizations. This is why so much emphasis is laid on achieving goals. No doubt, we must produce results, but we must not tie our happiness to them. The commonly held belief is that happiness lies in the future. When I achieve this or that, then I will be happy. More often than not, this causes frustration and despair. For the sake of reaching the finish line, people do whatever it takes, even at the expense of burnout and other collateral damage. Fortunately, there is a better way of working blissfully. Enjoy the process while striving for your goals. It's not merely about getting to the finish line, but also how you get there that matters. So, one important life hack we have understood here is to be process-oriented. Enjoy the journey and not tie our happiness to targets. A second point. Do not be a perfectionist. To always seek perfection is neurotic behavior. Because perfectionists look in the world as either white or black, as either success or failure. And the slightest error or deficiency makes them miserable. Now, in this world, perfection is a far-fetched thing. Instead, if we pursue excellence, it will mean we are striving to do the best that we can do. Although we realize there will be mistakes, shortcomings and deficiencies, never mind. Every time we fall, we will learn the secret of a better walking. We will focus on the delta improvement. 
So those who pursue excellence do not care so much for results. They live by the philosophy and do your best and leave to God all the rest. Now a third tip. If you can utilize your professional abilities, talents, positions in a way that makes a difference in the lives of people and helps make this world a little better place. That is a very fulfilling experience. Let's take inspiration from Dr. Govinda Pavankata Swami who used all these ideologies in his life. When he retired as an eye surgeon from government service in 1976, he had no equity with him except his little house in Madurai. But he had a purpose. He wanted to help eradicate curable blindness from India. That is people who can be cured, but they are blind because of lack of access to eye care. So he started the Arvind Eye Care Institution with a little hospital that had only 11 beds. But People loved the purpose that he had presented and they started joining him until his activity became a mission. In the space of a few years, they started treating hundreds of thousands and even millions of patients. Their philosophy was simple. They would take fees from patients who could afford it and also use it to treat free patients who could not afford it. In the year 1980, when IOLs, intraocular lenses, were invented, at that time the cost of purchase in the US was $150. Dr. Govindappa Venkataswani, also popularly known as Dr. V, he dreamt of making this available in a developing country like India. So he said, we'll take advantage of numbers and mass produce them. They started producing them at the price of $10 for one IOL set. Today, the Arvind Institution continues to produce 7% of all IOLs worldwide. In the year, 2012, the Arvind Eye Care Hospital chain became the biggest eye care provider worldwide, having treated 27.2 million patients and the number continues to increase till today. Dr. Venkata Swami passed away in the year 2006, but the legacy he left remains. In establishing that institution, he had to deal with the red tape of the Indian government. Had he been a perfectionist, he would have always been miserable. But his philosophy was to pursue excellence in his works, to focus on doing his best, and that Delta improvement brought his institution to where we see it today. These are three tips in our efforts to find joy at the workplace. But the most important point will be to achieve the state of flow. And how will we do that? We shall discuss in the next episode of the Art and Science of Happiness series.